This video is going to show you three must-know blending techniques to paint in acrylics. On the left, I'm going to show you how to blend beautiful backgrounds. In the middle, I'm going to show you wet-on-wet -wet blending technique, which is great for your initial layers and for blocking in large shapes. And then on the right, I'm going to show you a wet-on-dry technique, which is great for adding subsequent layers once you get the background and your initial layer down. So first, to blend a beautiful background, get a brush that fits the canvas. In this case, it's a little half inch wash brush, but it doesn't really matter. This is just conceptual. I've laid down white and green for this. Again, the colors don't matter. The key is to have the bristles moist, but not dripping wet. So here, as you're blending these paints together, wipe off the excess moisture, just so that the bristles are moist and they pull that paint well so it glides but it doesn't thin out or wash out or it's not so dry that it scrapes and drags. So here, once the two colors that you want to blend together meet, wipe off the excess paint and with that moist bristled brush, begin to blend those two colors together going in different directions. and periodically wipe off excess paint. Here I'm holding a rag and there's also a towel below to make it easy. You can also wash out excess paint if it begins to become overloaded. Just use your judgment there. So here, if your color begins to get too dark, drag some of the lighter color in. And if it begins to get too light, drag the darker color into the light. Once you get to this point, you're ready for the next phase, which is really the key to making beautiful soft backgrounds, and that is a dry, soft bristled wash brush. Once your colors are basically blended, take that wash brush, do not get any moisture on the bristles, keep it bone dry, and then lightly start to go in different directions over those two different colors that you'd like to blend. And if it starts to muddy like this, Simply wipe off the bristles or grab a new wash brush. So if it begins to get too dark, go back up into the lighter portion and begin to pull that lighter paint down into the darker and that's how you'll lighten it up. Vice versa if it gets too light. So now I've gone and grabbed a new fresh wash brush and I'm going to pull that lighter color down into the darker green and that's how you can create a beautiful soft background that looks like it was blended with oils. So now that we've covered backgrounds and we know how to make a beautiful background to start our painting out now we can move into wet on wet, which is a great technique for achieving beautiful blends for that first initial layer in your painting. To block in main shapes and things like that, this is great. Just to get a nice clean blend on those bigger initial shapes. And then usually the next technique, wet on dry, will be used as you add layers on layers on layers. But here, that initial layer where you have a large shape that needs blocked in or a large chunk of the painting that needs blocked in that was not covered by the background blend, this is perfect for filling that in and getting a nice blend within that larger shape. And then later on, we can begin to add layers on top of that. But here, I'm going to use purple and white just as we did with the green and white. And we're going to treat it pretty much the exact same way. Now throughout this demonstration, I'm using an angled small half inch wash brush, but the brush doesn't really matter. Just match your brush to the canvas. Bigger canvas, bigger brush, more paint. So here, as before, I moistened the bristles, wiped off the excess. We don't want it dripping wet so that it thins the paint out too much, and we don't want it too dry to where it scrapes and drags. We want it moist so that it pulls and loosens that paint up and we can spread it easily, but it has a nice creamy thick consistency that will blend together well. So initially just spread out your colors until they meet. 
same as before. And here, the only difference is, usually when we're using a wet on wet technique, we don't have as much room to work with or the luxury of being so sloppy and loose as we do with that background technique. This is where you need a beautiful soft blend, but you need to be more precise. So again, this is great for blocking in those initial layers and shapes in your first one or two layers, just to get your painting mapped out. Now here, once you get them to meet, just begin to brush out that meeting point as we did earlier, and begin to drag those into each other using those moist bristles and going in multiple different directions. If it starts to get too light, then go ahead and wipe off the excess and pull that darker pink or color, whatever color, into the lighter color. If it gets too dark, wipe off your brush and begin to pull that lighter color into and onto the darker color. And just begin to keep working this until you find a balance. So here I'm brushing it vertically, horizontally, at an angle, and moving it all the way around pretty much in a circle until it begins to soften up and blend for us. And this is this wet on wet is it's the same technique that we just did with backgrounds, except again we don't finish with a dry wash brush here. Obviously do it if you can, if you have enough room, but usually this technique again is used when you don't have as much room as you do when you first start with a background. You can be loose, you can, you don't have to be as accurate. You know, you're just filling in a blank canvas, you can fly through it, and uh, you don't need to be accurate. But with this, this will help you when you need to have a defined edge and fill in a defined shape. And here you can go back in and darken up that main color and drag it back up into the lighter color if you think it got too light on you. But this is, this is just conceptually, this is how you would do that. This is a wet on wet blend. And really the, the thing to focus on is the moisture content in your brush, making sure it's not too, too dry or too wet. And then just remembering if it gets too dark on you, pull the light color into the dark color. And if it gets too light, wipe your brush and start to pull that dark color into the light. Make sure to go in varying directions and keep your pressure light and let the brush, you know, let the hairs of the brush do the work. If you push too hard, you'll, you'll scoop that paint out and it'll build up on the sides of the brush and then it'll leave gullies and streaks and scrapes and brush marks and it won't look as nice as if you just use light pressure. So again, if your bristles get too loaded, just wipe them off, wash them out, start again, and just try to find that balance. So that's how you get a nice wet on wet blend and that's perfect for blocking in those initial layers again. Now, as you begin to add layers, this is the technique you will most likely use. And this is the most commonly used technique, unfortunately, because it gives you the ugliest blends. So it's, it's kind of funny, but this is just how it works with acrylics because most of the time, your acrylics dry so fast that as you add layers, the layer underneath will be bone dry and you'll be adding wet paint on top of that dry underpainting. Now there are slow dry and retarders and things like that, but, and those can help you to uh, get more chances and opportunities for a wet on wet blend and, and keep things wet for you. But this is just a beginner's guide. I want to keep it basic and just three techniques and concepts that can get you started and, and help you handle anything you're going to encounter. And then you can jump into that other stuff later on if you want to. But this is all I use. These are, these are pretty much the only three techniques I use in any of my paintings. So this will this will certainly get you, get you started. Okay, so now once you've started to add some paint and you're ready to start blending it, here's how you do wet on dry blend, or at least how I do, is I clean the bristles 
and I keep them moist but clean and then I start to just break up that edge of color. So you see that edge there where it goes from that dark blue to bright white. That edge is where you want to continuously dip your brush, wipe off excess, and then keeping it moist, just do tiny circles just like that with more pressure than you normally would and break up that pigment and that hard edge and that color and start to drag it and pull it out onto that, onto that dry surface. So that'll thin that pigment out. It'll start to wash it out and that extra water will allow you to continuously break up that edge and pull that pigment out so it starts to thin out and wash out and give you a, the illusion of a nice blend. Here's a rinse repeat, literally. So rinse them, wash off the excess, and then just using those moist, clean bristles, just find that new edge that you created and start to break that up and wash that out. So you'll, you can see you added your initial chunk of color and then cleaned your bristles, watered them down, and then dragged that color out. And then in doing so, you created a new edge. And then you go back, wash your brush, wipe the bristles, and then break up that new edge. And that's how you can uh, use these three techniques to pretty much do anything you're ever going to need to do. So hope it helps. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.